So this is part two. Uh, what we're going to be doing is going to our layers palette. Uh, like we did before, we're going to unlock layer one because uh, we're going to put a new sheet in our layer one. So select layer one, go to file, place, find your sheet number two uh, on your desktop and go ahead and place it uh, into your um, your new artboard and go ahead and lock layer one and now click layer two again so that we can continue with our uh, exercise here. So I'm going to zoom in to our sheet number two and now we're going to be working with the pen tool which is one of the worst tools in Illustrator but one of the most important ones. So uh, you can see the importance uh, uh, just based on where it is in the toolbar. Um, so we have the pen tool, we're going to click on it or the hit the letter P and the way the pen tool works <coughs> is just so you can see it'll allow you to click and click and make a line, click hold and make a curve, uh, click and hold make another curve and then click click and then finish the shape by going back to the beginning and you can see the outline here. Now you can also make, I'm going to undo, or I'm going to select that and delete it. You can also just make an open shape like this by hitting the, um, by going to like a, the selection tool and now you see you've got uh, just an open shape um, line here that has two points. You can always use the direct select tool to modify these anchor points just like we did before with some of the other stuff. So if you wanted to, you can always fix this. So um, the pen tool, I'm just going to hit delete again, hit delete twice here. Uh, we're going to go to the pen tool and to make a straight line, just like the line tool, we're going to click once and then we're going to hold the shift key down and click again. And now uh, we've got our line. I'm just going to click away using the selection tool. And here is the line. Uh, obviously, we're able to go to the properties and increase the stroke. Uh, this is an open shape and you can see that our tool, our our line does still have a, a cap that's not rounded so we're going to go ahead and, and go to the strokes palette and make sure that our cap is actually rounded. Okay, we zoom out. Uh, let's use the pen tool for this shape. You can see that the the shape itself has some rounded elements here as well as a rounded cap and that means that the corners are rounded as well. So you can see we're going to select both the rounded cap and the rounded joints. Uh, before we start, or you could do it after. We're going to go to the pen tool, click here, click here, click here. We're just doing this freehand, no shifting. And you can see just by clicking, remember to move, I'm holding the space bar because I'd like to be accurate here. Boop. And then finally here. And then when we're done, uh, we can hit escape. That actually stops. Um, I'm going to zoom out, command minus minus. Uh, hitting escape actually will get you out of this tool uh, or just clicking on the selection tool. If we me messed anything up, remember we can go to the direct selection tool. So if you made a mistake like this, going to the direct, direct selection tool, clicking once and then clicking on the anchor point allows you to modify each of these anchor points to get them to be almost perfect if you wanted them. Uh, if they were off by a little bit. Again, you have to click one. Be careful when you click once and move, it'll actually, you know, you won't know what you're moving. So you can obviously select the lines as well as the anchor points with the uh, direct selection tool. I'm going to go back to my normal selection tool. Now, how do you do, do curves? Well, this is really hard usually, uh, and it takes a lot of practice. The way a curve works is you'll start, let's zoom in here. You'll start, you'll click here. This is a good place to start. You'll notice it's a straight line here. Now, I, if I tried to make a curve by clicking here and pulling, you could see I'd be pulling so far that I just don't know where, how or where the curve is. So I'm gonna undo that a couple times and go back here. Okay, so the way this works is usually you'll go between two points and you can kind of see that you'll want the curve to be here. You click here, but you hold the mouse key down and you pull. And then once you've created this line that looks pretty close, you let go. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is you can see that it wants to start curving because of this line. This, this is the curvature of the, the curve right here. This is like the vector uh, type thing. So you can see you could put the point here and that would be uh, exactly where you want it. Right. And then you can just keep going. Now, uh, I click and hold. So make a curve here 
click and hold. And the idea is how few points can you make for this curve and still have it be a curve. Like so if I know that if I click here, I can still pull out some of the curvature here. And if I click here, you can kind of see it once I want it to change slope. So one way to do that is to click once on the last one. And now I've got a straight line again. So now I can actually do my own choice of how the anchor point needs to be. Now I can always modify these points after the fact. So even if you don't get it to be perfect, you can actually go in after the fact to um, modify these points. So again, I'm clicking and pulling, and I'm going to go in afterwards to, to get everything even. Clicking and pulling, clicking and pulling, clicking and pulling. And if it's not the right location, um, I'll fix it. And then finally click and pull. Now, uh, at this point, I'm going to hit escape. And you can kind of see that I can get my direct selection tool and actually go into these areas and say, hey, right here, this point, I can move it like this. Maybe I'll change the stroke a little bit under the properties to make it a little smaller so I could see what I'm doing. You can see it's kind of bent here, so I can actually smooth it like this. Um, let's see. And then you can kind of see if I zoom out. Like this point, it's got that. And when you change one thing, notice how it changes both sides. So be aware that, you know, you could pull this out a little bit. You could pull this one in. You're going to get a different shape. So the idea is like one, if you modify one thing, it will probably modify some of the other stuff as well. So be aware of that. And so make sure you're always looking um, between the two. Now, if you need an additional point, like here, maybe I wanted it to be a little bit lower on the stroke here. I'm just going to modify this a little bit. You can add an additional point by going to... Um, the pen tool or sorry the curvature tool no the pen tool if you hit the plus button i'm just going to go to the direct selection tool here for just so you can see this if you hit the plus just the plus button you'll notice you'll get the the pen tool with a plus on it you see here and that allows you to add a point to the curve you notice how that happened the minus uh, button will go to the remove uh, that anchor point. So you can actually add plus or remove minus um, use the tool to get to the uh, um, addition or subtraction of anchor points. Then going back to the direct selection, letter A by the way is the way you can get to this direct selection quickly. You can kind of see there letter A. Um, then you can go back and then modify the anchor points as needed. So again, when you add or remove anchor points, bad things happen. So be aware, uh, like you can kind of see this one kind of changed a little bit. And um, when I did that and try to get everything to like look as smooth as possible. So this is why we have so much fun with the pen tool. Um, and again, this is kind of wonky. Uh, so you can kind of either select it and move it. Uh, down the line there and that changes this so we don't want to change this handle and kind of just working our way around here oops click that anchor point move it up here a little bit and then change the the curvature of it so that it looks about right the idea is that we want to get this to look as uh, smooth as possible and pull this up a little bit so that it goes around and this one is like a little bit now notice there is like a curvature tool here so you could always click on it and make that a little smoother right it just it'll increase the number of points you can kind of see what happened here so I'm going to undo that because I don't know what this is doing to the rest of the curve um, so we'll just kind of like modify this here Maybe I'll click it once and then once again, and then I'll just smooth it out a little bit and add and then change this anchor point to here so that it's smooth. Hopefully this is helping, helping a little bit. The idea is that you want to be uh, as um, precise as possible with this tool so that um, you get good at it because you'll be using it to trace your own illustrations uh, as well. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
Command minus minus minus. And that looks pretty good. And if I use the selection tool, the regular one, select it and just increase the size, you can see that's pretty good. Okay. Um, the curvature tool is our next tool. So pen tool, you're going to need a lot of practice, but you can kind of see. Um, by the way, this is a window snap to grid. We turn the grid off, but you could actually use it with the pen tool. Uh, I'm going to hit escape here. I'm going to click click you don't notice how it's already it's a curvature here um, that's because I'm uh, using the wrong tool the pen tool hit the escape select pen tool and then click we were over quick on, on our curvature tool so you can see you can just so it's easy to do straight straight things so you can kind of see but if we wanted to curve one of these points, right? How would you go about doing it, right? Because it's like a solid. Um, it's not a. It's not a curve. There is a tool for that. It's called the curvature tool. It's right here, and that allows you to click uh, on uh, any one of these points. You can kind of see, a double click, and it turns. That becomes a curve. Click again, it becomes a, a corner. So you could use this to modify anything that you have. So if you don't want sharp corners. For instance, let's zoom out and let's just add a polygon here. Uh, we remember our polygon tool was here and we're just going to hold the shift key down, bring that in, just make it a little bit bigger with the shift key. Now, if I wanted to turn this polygon, hold the option and drag it into a circle, you could use the curvature tool, right? Because you could just double click each of these points until it's a circle. There we go. So just a FYI on that. You can now scale that uh, and uh, get that to be perfectly aligned with this. Oops, command zero brings me back in. That was crazy. Um, there we go. So as an example, we could take this guy that we've just made. And by the way, how many anchor points does this have? A lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Think about that. When you go to the ellipse tool, how many anchor points are you going to make? Well, let's take a look. We're going to just make an oval at this point and then go to this direct selection. One, two, three, four. So you really only need four points, not six, to make an oval. Now, with the curvature tool selected, I'm just going to double click this and double click this. And now notice I'm going to go back to my uh, selection area, V first, direct select. And you can kind of see I've made this leaf shape. I'm going to make it a little bigger and bring this out a little bit more so that it fits perfectly. And then I'm going to swap the fill with the stroke. There you go. I'm going to do that for this one as well. There we go. Uh, we're going to build this popsicle uh, as our final part uh, for this sheet. Uh, we're going to use the curvature tool and uh, some of the shape tools. So clearly I see a rectangle here. So I'm going to click select rectangle and just boom, make the rectangle. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to swap the stroke with the outline and I'm going to use this, this curvature tool on this area. So just select that and then double click, oops, double click that, oops, double click, there we go. So obviously I can use the direct selection tool. I'm going to select both of these guys by selecting them and just bring them down until so you can select points one at a time you can see that with a direct select or you can select multiple points and then move them as a group now we need to uh, round some of the corners so we are just going to go to our direct selection tool and we're just going to see if we can round these corners there it is and because I didn't double click it, that rounded everything, which is fine. I'm going to go to my direct selection tool and just bring this guy down a little bit and change the handle a little. There we go. So it's pretty close. Pull this out, pull this one out. There we go. Oops. There we go. Undo. Uh, the next two things inside so are just regular rectangles. I'm going to go ahead and swap. Let's see. I'm going to select this guy and make sure he's red. Oh, I can't see, so I'll just leave him outlined for a moment. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use my rectangle tool and just create a rectangle. There is a rounded rectangle tool as well. 
but we have more control if we use uh, the rectangle tool and then we can round it as needed. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to hold the Option key down and drag uh, until it's in the same area here. And I'm going to hold both of these together and swap them both at the same time and make this color slightly um, less, um, well, maybe a little less um, red. So let's select the foreground, double click, and then I'm just going to make this a little lighter and hit OK. And then I'm going to select the back one and swap that. And now you can see we've got these two things. Uh, for the last part, we're just going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to make a little rectangle. We're going to select our curvature tool, right? And we're going to select it. We're going to click and pull. That makes the bottom. And we're going to make this color a little darker. Hit OK. And we notice that we want to put this in the back. So, so let's go to my selection tool and right click. And then we're going to arrange send to back or shift command bracket. And now it puts it in the back. And then finally, we need that little bit of shadow. So we'll just use a regular rectangle to create that little bit of shadow. There we go. And we're going to change that color a little, make it a little darker. And we're going to, again, push this to the back. So going back to my selection tool, right clicking, uh, range, send to back. And now it's behind this one. So I want to select this one, arrange, send to back. And now when I zoom out, there's my popsicle.